Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, December 23rd. Oh, Christmas Eve Eve. <laughs> Christmas Eve Eve. That's what it is. It yeah. is the eve of Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah, Mike is beaming in today. Um I I'm looking across from me at the studio and like his in-studio microphone is like down and kind of droopy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's flaccid. Yeah, yeah it's, it's flaccid and it's like sad and oh, it, looks, no. it looks like it retired, <laughs> oh, like it ran it, out of gas. I think it's just missing you. I think Jake Riz just is lazy and left it like that. Mm. Mm. I thought maybe it was strategic because we got Mike's video in here, but uh, no, 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 it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a good show for you today. We got some buy sell. We got some mailbag, some news to talk about injuries. Oh my, could have a big Big role in your fantasy championship week. So uh, excited to talk about that on Christmas Eve Eve. Big announcement. The 2020 Foot Clan title t-shirts, mugs are on shopballers.com. So if you have won, if you won a title last week, which I know a lot of you have, uh, if you're about to win one, now you know. Foot Clan title t-shirt for 2020 available at shopballers.com. I will say this. I also put up a youth shirt this year. Mm. Um, oh, which I we saw. We are, we are. Yeah, we we. I, it was the first of all the the title shirts to be sold, believe it or not. And so we've got, uh, which makes me excited because, like, I don't know. We've had our kids playing this year, and it's been really fun. Uh, yeah, that that was really fun until uh, Monday night when uh, I sat with my son and we watched Juju. Not score eleven points. And yeah, your son he, was eliminated. How did he, he handle it? Not well. <laughs> no, <laughs> not not he he did not handle it very well. Uh, the right tradition has already properly been passed down. What did he eat? Like season. a lot of food afterwards, or what was the tradition? Oh, losing? Just no, no not oh <laughs> losing. Uh, who's who's in the legal <laughs> record championship? You turd. <laughs> no, I'm saying the. The not handling the loss well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you? Just, yeah, I was gonna say just, better or worse than Jason. Good oh, question. better than Jason. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> he didn't turn into a caveman. Uh, I just feel like there should be at this point in time. I mean, we have automation technology. Al Borland is is one of the best. He, he, his house is filled with automation. Um, we need the we need the tilt button in the house. When you lose, there should be a button you push, and it it automatically orders. Too much food from Postmates or yeah, Uber we'll say, Eats. What is it? It's just like two guns that shoot ice cream <laughs> at you. It's something like that. Yeah. Alexa, I'm tilting. I guess losing a fantasy football game and like the uh, traditional breaking up with your boyfriend method of of coping are very similar, right? I'm thinking of the the gallons of ice cream. Mm. I guess yeah, I do well, that look, regardless yeah, look, of winning or yeah, losing. Yeah, so the gallons of ice cream can, can it can uh, be a celebration a or. A- Okay, so you've got the shirts. We have a jam-packed Christmas Eve show tomorrow. It's a mini Meggie. Mini Meggie? <laughs> Little mini Meggie. Uh, but it will be an extended, long, yeah. special Christmas Eve edition. You don't want to miss it. We've got some Christmassy stuff, and it'll be a long show. Yeah, it'll have every matchup in it. So, And we've got games on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. So Merry Christmas to all, hopefully. Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow the show over there. Jason is at Jason FFL. Mike is at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. The website with the start sit tool, player profiles, some new team profiles, and a lot of stuff to help you out. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by Pristine Auction. Mike with the rare three for three and buy or sell last week. He bought, bought Kyler Murray as a top 10 quarterback, which uh, I did as well. Bought DeAndre Swift. 
with 75 total yards. He hit 82. He just made it. Hit 82. And then Kareem Hunt sold Kareem Hunt as a top 20 running back. He ended up um, just a bit outside at running back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, that's not that's not top twenty. That is not top twenty. All right, week sixteen buy or sell, guys. J.K. Dobbins against the New York Football Giants is he a top twelve running mm. back this week? For context, the last three weeks RB sixteen, RB sixteen, RB eighteen. I don't know why I would think he's a top 12 this week I'm gonna sell it yeah I, I agree I think that line is a little too high you've got Dallas Jacksonville and Cleveland were the three matchups where he failed to crack top 12 he's been good he's been a, someone that you're gonna start but I don't think that against the New York Giants is where he elevates to a uh, top 12 guy I will sell as well yeah it's the, the problem with making it into the top 12 finishing there like up We've we've all got J.K. Dobbins ranked very high because you're playing J.K. Dobbins with confidence. But for him to crack that mark, he would have to he would have to score twice. And with Gus Edwards and Lamar Jackson stealing touchdowns, I don't think he'll hit that. So, well, let's, or, or uh, I would hedge against it. Let's go. Let's go top fifteen. Let's just change the line. Top fifteen okay. J.K. Dobbins this week against that the I Giants. Would buy. Opportunities have gone from eleven to thirteen to fifteen the last three weeks. Mike's buying it. I will sell it. Jason, what are you doing? I, I'm going to stay with the sell. I, I, I like J.K. Dobbins. I think you can play J.K. Dobbins, but Mike illustrated the point. There's too many ways that the points can go to Lamar Jackson and Gus Edwards and not to J.K. Dobbins. All right, Chris Carson against the Los Angeles Rams. Does he hit 80 total yards? Um, Tough matchup. Yeah, tough matchup. He was at 110 two weeks ago, 98, or I'm sorry, three weeks ago, 98 yards two weeks ago. Last week against Washington, 69 yards. Nice. Uh, I'm going to buy. I, I realize it's a oh. it's a very difficult matchup. Hard to run against the Rams. Right now they are number four on the season of fantasy points given up. But Chris Carson looked great last week. He really did. It's funny because he was very disappointing. Um, he, he, you know, he only had 69 yards. He didn't get, uh, but I don't think Carlos Hyde is going to be ripping off, you know, 60 yard touchdown runs and that kind of stole some production. So I, I like Chris Carson. Uh, I'm a pretty hard sell here. I, I agree. He looked good, but <clears throat> you know, uh, Hyde looked good too. Yeah. And the Rams are tough. So I'm going to sell. I am also going to sell that 80 total yards against the Rams. It's, that's pretty high. All right. Terry McLaurin. I think he's one of the hardest players to kind of get a gauge on right now and how you feel about him. A lot of start-sit questions are um, revolving around, you know, Terry McLaurin or Deontay Johnson for the upcoming week. Who's Terry's quarterback this week? Exactly. Nice point, Mike. I, I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm asking because I don't know. Is no, it neither do we. It's not Haskins. <laughs> I believe him breaking protocol uh, will. He could have a four game suspension. Yeah, That's... I mean, I, I don't expect it to be Haskins, but I don't know who it is. I don't think anybody is is certain on that. However, regardless of who it is, he, you know, he's he's had decent games with everybody so far, right? So the, the line here set by Brooks, Terry McLaurin versus Carolina, at least seven total receptions. So we're just looking at involvement. Um, he's hit exactly seven receptions in half of his game, in, in half of his games this year. Obviously very talented. Um, not sure if we feel confident with Taylor Heineke or if Alex Smith comes back. It is really funny to look at his game log and see seven games with seven receptions exactly that's wild um i'm gonna sell though that that's still a, a high line i i feel like getting seven receptions in a game um is is difficult even though he's done it a lot and if there is a heineke situation here mm. uh, you might need 20 targets to get seven receptions i'm gonna sell now, it. is the joke for heineke I, is it <sighs> Heine related or is it Heineken related? I, I did. It did. It, it could be either, Mike. I, I wanted to make the want to touch the <laughs> Heineke. Heineke? Oh, that's it. Well, we got there. We found out where it's I a Heineke. I wasn't going to say it, but then you set it up. So and hot. So hot. Want to touch the Heineke. I that, make no apologies. That, that yeah. one is bad. <laughs> oh, that was great. I thought that was fantastic. All the people agree. Yes. 
Wait a minute. What has, what has happened since I've been out of the office? I I'm Ooh. telling you, we are. This show is dissolving. Mm-hmm. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> Mike, are you buying or selling seven receptions? I I'm gonna buy it. Uh, and honest, like I don't know who the quarterback is gonna be. This this is really gonna be a like. Or, 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 let me ask you guys this: Have you heard any news that Dwayne Haskins? is not allowed to play because if the this the possible uh punishment is an option the team is allowed to do that it, the but, the report that we have today is that he could be fined a week's salary and face a four game be. suspension for engaging in high risk covid-19 conduct I mean so, this this is a this is a really big moment here for Ron Rivera who was yeah. brought in to to clean up the culture of the Washington football team and if, let's say Alex Smith is not ready, and then Dwayne Haskins is there. You're fighting for the division. Are you gonna? Are you gonna sit down? Your best chance to win a division with two weeks left. That is a brutal call that I am very happy I do not have to make. So, and just for the sake of competition, I will buy it. Okay. Sounds good. That was buy or sell. Brought to you by Pristine Auction. You can go to pristineauction.com. Use the code Ballers. Get a $10 credit towards your first purchase of some sweet autographed sports memorabilia. Time to do some news. News and notes from around the league. All right. NFL playoff scenarios. The headline, the message for fantasy players is that you're going to have all teams full go playing for something this week. Which Th is why it's the championship week. Because this might not happen next week in week 17. That's right. The Chiefs can clinch a first round bye. They can do it via winning. They can do it uh, via Pittsburgh or Buffalo losing. But those games are simultaneous and they will not know. I mean, the, the difference here is the only one, the, yes. only the number one seed gets a bye week. That's, yes. that's what changed things here. I, I imagine the scenarios are far different if two teams get a bye week. And that's significant for fantasy players. It's good it for is. fantasy players. I mean, we, we may see um, 17 weeks next week, too. I mean, that's something we haven't talked about in a while. But next year. Next, yeah, I say next week? Yeah. Well, next week is week 17. Oh, so you were right both ways. Incredible um, work. <laughs> yeah, but next year we could see an extension of the season where we'll be making fun of week 18 championship games, which <laughs> I, look, I look forward to. Yeah, me too. Um, but, yeah, that's that's the headline. For the week, I think that's all we need to take away. We don't need to go through every team scenario, I don't think. No. Raheem Mostert was placed on IR, left high ankle sprain, ending his season. Mm. My name is Jeff. Kyle Shanahan believes George Kittle has a chance to return for the Saturday game against the Cardinals. Mike, I know you're looking for various streaming tight end options. This is not one of your options, is it? George Kittle? Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately... Not, Not one of your choices. League. No, no, no. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo has been designated. Uh, he, his window opened for returning. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, it's mm. not going to be him. It's going to be C.J. Beathard. They signed uh, Josh Rosen. Um, got him. They got their guy. Incredible. Um, so I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think he's there this week. But it is worth, you know, pointing out. Obviously, if. If George Kittle is out there and you are looking at a tight end option, you must pick him up in case he plays. It also should remove Jordan Reed from consideration as a streaming option at the tight end position um, at a minimum. Correct. All right. There was some news this morning. <clears throat> I know that uh, you know one of the players that has been the biggest steal for fantasy football managers has been James Robinson. James Robinson – was an undrafted player that ended up a top five running back. Doug Marone talking this morning said that he will be rested in practice this week, but hopes he can play. I know you're excited, Andy. You would really like to have Christian McCaffrey and James Robinson in your lineup. Yeah, it's you know losing Raheem Mostert was tough for my dynasty team heading into the title game. James Robinson, I figured was gone, so this is just like found money to me. I figured I had already ruled him out. So the fact that he wants to play, that the team has said he might be able to play, uh, it's interesting. Now, confidence level depth. on playing him. That's where I was going to go. I mean, in a dynasty league, yeah, you're throwing him in there because you don't have a better replacement. But in a in a redraft where you might have 
some sort of a replacement. I mean, obviously not the tier of what James Robinson has been doing, but let's say you uh, you picked up Jeff Wilson. Yes. And he's taken on Arizona. Are you going to trust the ankle of James Robinson, or would you play? Or the ankle of Jeff Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, his was a hamstring at least. Oh, okay. He says he's okay. Or or, or Daryl Daryl Henderson. Um, sure, or Daryl you know, Henderson. Now that Cam Akers is out of the way, We're, if you've got a replacement, I personally lean towards that. I'm a little bit more scared. I mean, the injury looked so significant. Um, obviously, I don't think he plays. Yeah, I mean that that, that will make the decision very very easy. <laughs> um, but it's it, you know he's. James Robinson has overcome all challengers uh, this season. Bad team, no problem. Bad quarterback, no problem. Changing quarterback, no problem. Tough matchup. Maybe follow the news a little bit closely You know, towards the end of the week, too. If there's more optimism that comes early, I don't know. I, I'm with you guys. I, under, I understand the risk there. And it's the Bears. It's not a smash matchup or anything like that. It's not going to be a layup. It is impressive. He had 19 opportunities last week against Baltimore. He is very much a James finds the way kind of player where it doesn't really matter what matchup if he gets this a full is the way. Yeah, if he gets a full allotment of snaps. Um Ronald Jones, this is big news. Expected to miss week 16 according to the Tampa Bay Times. Oh, Leonard. Oh gosh. Leonard Fournette. Um Okay, how about James Robinson with no practice or Leonard Fournette? Oh, I would definitely go James Robinson. Okay. Is that just so that you don't have to say that you played? That's right, Lenard. Uh, I yeah. I mean, obviously, we saw last week he got two touchdowns. He could fall in the end zone. That's fine. Um, I don't really calling him Lenard feels punitive. It, it feels I'm like a way of get, of getting something back. It's one hundred in this relationship. It's, it's really just it's it's to mock. Leonard him. Fournette scored two touchdowns last week, and now gets the Detroit Lions. I believe you mean Lenard. Yes. Yes, I did, <laughs> Lenard. Is going to play against the Detroit Lions, who are yeah. Not he's a good. He's a good play. That good. Oh, they're terrible against, against running backs. Running backs, and they might not have like defensive coaches. I just checked the website because I wanted to see the matchup. Uh, actually, he's on the web under Leonard. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's you know Detroit's ranked dead last in football against the run, and it's a fifty-three and a half point over under and. He was a top 12 running back last week, and he is a... And he'll catch the ball. Yeah, I mean, you, you really... He is a start this week. It is yeah, true. So you play Leonard. Right. Sit Leonard. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving forward, Daryl Bevel does not expect Matthew Stafford to be shut down. Took a seat at the end of the blowout loss against the Titans. This is... Exceptional news if you are interested in playing Marvin Jones Jr., who has been... Which you should be. He has been unbelievable. I was breaking down these numbers to, to Jason yesterday, Mike. 12 targets in three of the last four games, two top five finishes at the wide receiver position out of the last three games. He is a must-start this week if Stafford's healthy, which it looks like he will be in there. Being in there and healthy is two different things for Matthew Stafford, but he should start. And um, any other big news that we need to cover? We will get a practice report on Christian McCaffrey today. And there have been, you know, this will be the moment, I think, today. I don't think it's going to be a thing that, you know, if he practices today, there's a pretty good chance he's back out there. That's what the team has said. Matt Rule has said if he's able to practice, he's going to try to get him back out on the field. That would be awesome. The only other thing, it, it, I, I made a quick joke about it, but uh, because of the close contact protocols with uh, the Detroit Lions, their defensive coordinating set, like their their entire uh, fleet of defensive coaches are basically close contacts. They're going to have to do everything remotely, and I believe uh, Ian Rapport finished his tweet saying Detroit is still determining who can coach this Saturday. Do we not? That's I mean, not good. This should be an iPad on a robot situation. <laughs> right. Yes. I mean, we have the technology. Like I said, we should have um, C-3P over there. I mean, I've seen it in the Tide commercials with Peyton. He's yeah. doing it. Yeah. I don't see why not. Yeah, they're not playing. It's more. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to wear a mask if you're an iPad on the sideline. Yeah, I mean, you got you got coaches up in the booth. Why not just in a, in a war room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, all right. I, that's what I would do. Yeah, agreed. Although, if there's no defensive... Or I can coach. I'm available. Oh, all right. 
I mean, I, are you I'm, available or are you busy uh, commenting a, a, the Arizona Cardinal game? Oh, because there has been a there has been a movement. The uh, the 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 team that calls the Arizona games they are contact trace. They are not allowed to call the game this weekend. And I've tried to tell the Cardinals and, and Arizona sports that we're we're available. That's true. I mean, I'm I'm willing. Oh yeah, I'm in. I'm in. All right, Foot Clan, before we get to the mailbag, want to thank today's sponsors. Thanks, Hims. Uh, look, I mean, you, you can see me on uh, on YouTube. My hair is not as luscious as Mike the Fantasy Hitman, right? And I'm not alone. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. And once you're thinning, you got you got to take you care of it. You winning. You got to take care of it right away. You ain't grinning. Once you're bald, you you know going backwards is hard. But if you're starting to get bald spots and that hairline is starting to move back, the solution to your problem is forhims.com. It's a one stop shop for all your hair loss, skin care, wellness for men. It's time to write a new chapter one where you have hair, um, which is <laughs> it's a better chapter. Awesome. And the nice thing is this is this is thanks to science. Uh, this isn't snake oil, you know, uh, gas station counter supplements. Uh, this is prescription solutions backed by science, which is exactly what you're wanting if you want to fix your hair loss problems. Today, Hims is giving their best offer yet. If you're not happy with the results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund. And right now, our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Go to forhims.com slash ballers. That's forhims.com slash ballers. And prescription products require an online consultation with a health care provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's forhims.com slash ballers. And football fans, eh, I don't need to ask this question, but are you an Amazon Prime member? Yep. Yeah, yes. you are. This holiday weekend, Prime Video, Jason, it's the place to watch the NFL. I love being able to watch the NFL on Prime Video. Yeah, back-to-back uh, -back games this weekend. On Friday, Christmas Day, the Vikings take on the Saints in an NFL Christmas special. I am so excited, by the way, just my son and I, for a Christmas game. It's a different Christmas this year. We don't have all the big festivities. Having that to look forward to has been amazing. Uh, since I'm in a title game. Then on Saturday, the 49ers face the Cardinals in a divisional showdown only on Prime Video. And uh, don't worry, if you aren't a Prime member, if you're one of those, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial and you'll get both games. So that's easy. And you can catch it on any device, which is what makes it really, really fun. Friday, the Vikings Saints. Saturday, the 49ers Cardinals. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Eastern for both games with kickoff at 4.30, both on Prime Video, presented by Bud Light Platinum, mm, yes. <laughs> also yeah. available on mobile yeah. and in select <laughs> markets. Uh, you ready for the mailbag, Mike? Uh, actually, no. Jason's going to do it. Oh, okay. Oh, what? Jason, here oh, you go. I didn't know. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> This is uh, up and down a little. That uh, that mailbag drop brought to you by Bloodlight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. uh, blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. <laughs> All right. Everybody's still with us. <laughs> Judge Giamatti. Uh, Al Borland. Oh yeah. Man. Al Borland, you doing all right? I'm great. That's good. That's good. All right, we're into the mailbag. If you have a question for the show, we love to help. The fantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. You can also dial the voicemail hotline, 302 464 TFFB. They saw Jason. He cracked his neck. He's he's cracking his knuckles. He's ready for the questions. I gotta I gotta get my body and mind get loose. prepared. That's right. All right, let's start with a voicemail question. Oh, I have those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he threw it to the producer. Oh, I did that throw it himself. to the producer. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting lazy. Here we go. Hey, guys. It's Mark from Boston. Who should I have in my flex? Cole Beasley against New England or Corey Davis for Screen Bay? Oh. PPR League. Thanks, oh. guys. I'm glad you specified your league format. But but I'm not 100% sure that 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 changes the equation for me. Mike, is it is it Cole Beasley because of PPR? Uh, I mean, what, where are we with John Brown? Um, I believe John Brown is still on the IR, is not able okay. to come back yet. 
All right. I, th I thought I had saw something that he was. Stefan Diggs is supposed to practice to today, which uh, is good news for Stefan Diggs managers. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that it, is rough. Yeah, neither neither one of these is a is a great matchup. Uh, Green Bay and New England are both good against the pass. Um, I think Corey Davis has obviously a, a high ceiling, but a lower floor because of the passing volume. And I expect that no question. I expect that the PPR baseline um, with Cole Beasley to to be a higher floor. And and if Diggs reaggravates it or doesn't play, you know, he's just. I think he's more necessary to the offense. So I lean Cole Beasley in a full PPR. I, what if I told agree you, with that. Oh, I, was, I thought I was looking at Corey Davis. Yeah, I mean, Cole Beasley, double digit targets, five of the or four of the last five games. Exactly. Yeah, I think you got to take that that baseline. And, and look, and Cole Beasley's had a couple hundred yard games in that span as well. All right, we have a quick Instagram question to quarterback league: Cam Newton or Marcus Mariota? Uh, that's oh my goodness that's Mariota for me oh yeah oh goodness. gross I just said that out loud <laughs> I just said that on our in show the championship I just week. recommended Marcus Mariota guys but wow. that's that's at the least, answer at least he runs still I mean yeah. Cam Newton kind of scampers every once in a while I feel physical pain when Cam Newton tries to throw the football I feel it in my shoulder it hurts uh, you've got plenty of time to have that feeling while he starts his throwing process, right? You can before the hatchet gets thrown. Exactly. Just, Is there every any single chance? time he throws a ball? It's like he's white. He, he's like pulling a, a bow and arrow. Like he's pulling it all the way back yeah. so he can launch it into the ground. Is there right. Is there any chance with New England eliminated that we see Stidham come in? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so I mean, w with that and the fact that it's a good point, Mike. That Cam Newton has been rough. I would go with Mariota. Yeah, I agree. Jason, you agree? Yep. Okay. Let's grab another voicemail. What's up, ballers? This is Brian in Kansas City. I'm having a little trouble figuring out who to put in my flex out of my weapon box. Uh, <laughs> full PPR. There's Claypool, but I almost want to start Sammy Watkins against Atlanta. Thanks for the help. Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, let, let's take a little look at uh, let's take a little look at Sammy Watkins here. I mean, we've got a consistency score of F. That sounds about um, Watkins. That's is that uh, for funky. Uh, it's for uh, <laughs> six point three percent of the time he exceeds a usable benchmark. Sammy Watkins hasn't um, been relevant in a really long time. There is no question in my mind that you should go with Chase Claypool. Yeah, the the upside is there for either guy's physical ability to take it to the house. Obviously, you've got the better quarterback with Pat Mahomes. There is a clear Big Ben problem, uh, but Claypool is the better player. If you look, the targets have still been there for Claypool. Uh, you know, you, you you go back eight targets, six targets. He had a bad one with four, nine the week prior to that. There's deep shots every week to him. Yeah, I would I would stay with Claypool. I know it's been a bad month for him, um, and it's just been a horrific month for the Steelers' offense. You don't have to say nice things about Claypool. You can just say mean things about Sammy Watkins. That's also <laughs> acceptable for okay. an answer. Okay. What if I told you that over the last month, Sammy Watkins has averaged more fantasy points per game? I would say it's irrelevant. If you get what he has averaged over the last month, you lose with him too. So you lose with either guy over the last month, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, so a nickel with, is uh, worth upside. more than a penny, but you're still not buying a chocolate bar with either. <laughs> well, perfectly said. Thanks. Uh, from the man That's who brought the, us the weapon box know, as, yesterday, as Mama always used to say. Um, are there are there any waiver wire options that would legitimately be out there? You Russell think? Gage, I'd play over both of those players. Gabriel Davis with no with Diggs, no, not I unless not if go. Diggs missed. Hansen? But Russell Gage, yes. Would you go mbop? I would mbop this week over those two players, yes. Okay. I th I think I would. I yeah, would I, 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 I would as well. Think about that. I mean, part of winning a title is is the, the journey and the process. And if you're mbopping all day long, that's not a bad place to be. No. If you get to mbop. Yeah. You, uh, but if you don't get to mbop and you played him. Do you play him more? Are you more likely to play him if like you're watching games with your opponent? Yes. 
in That's, championship week? Absolutely. Every time he catches. Yeah. Mm -bop. Yeah, very nice. Da -ba -da. We saw those coming through Twitter. Uh, it's Chad Hansen. Yeah. Brooks wants us to mention the name. <laughs> Chad Hansen, wide receiver for okay. the Houston Texans. If you don't and know. And drummer for the band you know. Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> That's who the kid grew up to. He, he grew, grew up, up to be a, a wideout. Yeah. <laughs> we are old. Okay. Twitter. Laura has a question. Rob, oh great! This one, this oh, one is my and, team. Andy has your answer. Yeah, Ro no, no, I don't. Robbie Anderson or T.Y. Hilton this week in a half PPR oh. league. Oh, 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 T.Y. Hilton, T.Y. Hilton has Pittsburgh. I know that. Uh, Robbie Anderson. I'm trying Washington to, football team. I'm trying to remember all the good that he's done for my team, and not the bad he did last week that I had to overcome. That um, was his worst game of the year. Yes, it was. And he is uh Yeah, he only had five targets after twelve the week before against Green Bay. It fell apart though. I mean, that first half of offense for Carolina was it was like Big Ben watched that film and was like, I can do that. Like that was what happened. Um it's that's a tough call. I would love you two to tell me what to do there. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, you very much. So you have this exact decision that you need to make. I will this have week. to make this exact decision because right now both are in my lineup, but I could get CMC or James Robinson back and I will play those players over them. So that's bold. Um I I mean I could play both. Mike, are you playing TY Helton this week in your championship game? Uh I have if I can help it, I will not be. Um although I mean the Pittsburgh Steelers team has just they are in an absolute free fall and even though you didn't see you didn't see it over and over from Ryan Finley and company you saw uh you saw a few lapses in coverage and TY Hilton could t could take yeah, advantage with, of Yeah with with the injuries to the Steelers the involvement that we've seen with TY Hilton and the absolute shut down nature of this Washington football defense, I lean T.Y. Hilton this week. Hey, here, I, here's the truth. Your, your ceiling's higher with Hilton than it is with Robbie Anderson. But I think your floor is higher with Robbie Anderson despite last week. Yeah, I just hate those snap counts for T.Y. Hilton, man. Let me let me illustrate what Jason's saying about the uh, using our team profiles. In these last three losses by Pittsburgh, I mean, this is a team that had been a top 10 defense every single week of the year but one against Tennessee for 12 straight weeks. The last three weeks against opponents that included Washington and Cincinnati, 21st, 17th, and then 26th on defense. So there is opportunity, and maybe that, maybe that pushes the Hilton side. Yeah, I mean, how did DK Metcalf do this last week? And Tyler Lockett and all the receiving options against the Washington football team. Yeah. Not very good. No, not very good. I would like to believe that Pittsburgh will score and therefore, you know, you could yeah, be in a situation a where too. where the Colts have to score. But Can Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh score on the Colts? I think Jonathan Taylor will have – well, yeah, Gio Bernard just exploited Pittsburgh. It's tough to change your view of that defense after 12 weeks. Yes, it is. Uh, especially when you have uh, plus matchups. So, um, hmm. I would I would play Robbie. Oh, okay. You'd go Robbie. I would I would go Robbie. Uh, the I had, you know, the it, like I said, the snap counts of for for TY Hilton. I know he got it done that three game stretch, but we have far more we have far more evidence of him playing 60% of snaps and not producing. So I mean, for I'll the last the month, the he field. hasn't had fewer than 70 yards. Who? Hilton. T.Y. Hilton. So, Mike, you're Robbie, and Jason, you're Hilton? Yeah, right. I'm Robbie. So you guys are really helping Laura, and you're really helping me out. You Congratulations. Hey, we we detailed I know. the situation, and now you get to make the decision. Brooks, who do I start? <laughs> <laughs> Robbie. Okay. Okay, you said that pretty... Uh, Jeremy, Robbie. Oh, I was really hoping he went Ty just just to make it split again. Huh? Even after all that stuff I said about the Steelers D, huh? Yep. All right. All right. Let's grab another voicemail. Hi, this is Brendan from Detroit, Michigan, and I just picked up Daryl Henderson, and I'm wondering if I should start him over DJ Moore. Thanks, guys. Keep up the great work. Mm. My answer is 
the, a big yes. Yeah, mine is as well. Everything we just said about Robbie Anderson and the matchup, it's also true of DJ Moore. Uh, same team. So I think that's a really difficult matchup, whereas Daryl Henderson should get a, a ton of work with Cam Akers out of the way. We had a stretch of really solid fantasy production from Daryl Henderson when he was the guy when Cam was gone before. So I'm 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 with Henderson here. Yeah, Henderson had had a five week stretch where he was a top twenty four running back four times, a top ten or sorry, sorry, top twelve three times when he was getting the work. Yeah. I, I, well, he's splitting the work the, definitely. And in in the game against Seattle, he was a top twenty four running back, but that was only eight opportunities. It was because he scored. If you remember that game, uh, uh, against Seattle, Jared Goff took Jared Goff did everything. It was it was all passing yards, everything except the touchdowns. That's the only. Oh, I remember that the, that the <laughs> running back. Yes, you yeah, did. <laughs> he was your start of the week. That's right. And Jared Goff, if Jared Goff just gets the touchdowns that the running back stole that week, then he would have been a, uh, an absolute smash play. Uh, I lean the Henderson side, but I don't. Th I don't think Henderson is as, as locked in. Uh, like. If if Tony Pollard, you know, if if Zeke is out and Tony Pollard is the guy, he's going to get all the work. Henderson, I imagine, it goes back to him splitting time with Malcolm Brown. Yeah, but but again, while he split time with Malcolm Brown when Cam was gone, he was very good. I'm playing Daryl Henderson this week as my answer, final answer. Jason, yeah, same. All right, uh, YouTube, uh, Tyler Lockett. YouTube wants to know this. Yes, YouTube subscriber this LB Coolin. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube the yeah the platform. Uh, Tyler Lockett for smooches. Would you bench Tyler Lockett for JD McKissick? I mean, just Jason just shrunk down to a very small level in his chair. And look, fellas, we've we've discussed you know how the audio drops come through when you're on remote, <laughs> and we, we have also discussed at length. How startling and terrifying that the smooches drop is. Uh, I feel like someone just took a cattle prod to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> no. Someone has pooped in your pants. Mike, if you want to know. <laughs> yeah, uh, whose poop is this? <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to know definitively, I did not push that button today, Mike. I, I have more respect for you as a person. I appreciate that. I, I, did, I, did, not, that button. I did not poop in your pants. Is what I'm well, saying. Someone did. Al Borland. Al Borland pooped in your pants. Uh, it's J.D. McKissick. It is McKissick. Yeah. Assuming Antonio Gibson is out, which uh, that's what I assume. I want you I to say this JD sentence, out loud. I no. want you to say, I, I'm starting J.D. McKissick over Tyler Lockett this week. I will week. not give you that audio clip. <laughs> All right. Instagram question. From Just say yes if it would be J.D. McKissick over Lockett. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> whose poop is this all right uh jankowski <laughs> underscore brie on instagram what are your thoughts on richard higgins this week in a ppr league or should i go with someone like jeff wilson in my flex Ooh. shard higgins finished as the wide receiver eight then 15 then 38 against the giants but he's, has the Jets this week? He's been involved, very involved. Ten he targets, is, nine targets. In those he three is weeks. an oak. He's he's a fine option. I I think that um, you can play him this week. But if you have an option, I I think that Jeff Wilson is a better option um, than Higgins is. So I would I would go Jeff Wilson, not an indictment against Rashad Higgins. If Wilson practices in full and looks set up, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I agree. But uh, Rashard Higgins, I'm with you guys. That he's he is in play, especially in a PPR format. All right, uh, Jack Harrigan from Facebook. Start George Kittle if activated off of the IR. This is one of the more popular questions out there. Yes, if he yes. is active in that game, he is going to be one of the you know centerpieces of that offense. It's him and it's Ayuk, and I and and the thing is, is <laughs> you're starting him over garbage I already know that that's true because if you don't have I mean I'm not starting him over Darren Waller I'm not starting him over Travis you want me to Kelsey. give you the list and we'll just figure out where he slots in I think I just finished if he's active 
I mean, I you're not starting him over Mark Andrews. No, I was I was going to add Andrews to that. To Are you that starting list. him over Robert Tunyon right now? That's that's the line for me where it's difficult. Mm. I think I would play. No, I'd I play would play Kittle. Over I would Tunyon. play Kittle. Logan Thomas, who's just blistering. Yeah, I would play Kittle. T.J. Hawkinson. Kittle. Kittle. Okay. So I mean, I yeah. If if you don't have one of those big three other tight ends, Antonio then, Gates. Ooh, Gates <laughs> for sure. Which he's on, he's with Tony, Tony, Tony Gates. Gonzalez. Yeah. If, if if they go to their former quarterbacks and t- if Dallas Clark, <laughs> we're oh, I'm, I'm just, just dropping bring, all I'm, the oldies. I'm just bringing the oldies back. <laughs> what about uh, Jermichael Finley? No, Al. Ooh. Tunyon Al? has uh, taken over. Yeah, I'd start TD Tunyon. Oh, okay. TD yeah. Tunyon. Yeah. I Is mean, that what the people in Green Bay are calling it's him? It's a producer nickname. That's fine for a producer nickname. It's just one of the producers' nicknames. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brooks with the get bodied. Oh, he, he disclaimed it quick. Oh, oh man. Oh, my God. <laughs> just a slap across <laughs> Borland's face. <laughs> Producer, fight. Producer, fight. Ironically, he slapped me with a stack of $100 bills. Yes, oh, that's man. True. That's, that's true. it. I, I'm not Th- actually, uh, well, those are million dollar bills. No one else has them. <laughs> all right instagram question from uh brm80352 since i need to read the, the oh, name beep up boop, beep. <laughs> that is the new coach for the detroit lions <laughs> it's brm80352 <laughs> um, <laughs> hope they have stable wi-fi yeah <laughs> yeah i like that uh tony pollard if zeke is out or jonathan taylor against pittsburgh that is a oh that is a hard question uh, it is a fair question, though. After Pollard was the number one overall, uh, yeah. I mean, if if Zeke is out, I'm going to play Pollard in a better matchup. I I think Pollard has been absolutely electric every time he's touched the ball this year. He's involved in the passing game, so you have the PPR baseline. Uh, either one of these guys could have a monster week, but uh, you know what. Uh, at least Pollard doesn't have to play against the Steelers. And Pollard will catch more passes. Yeah. I I go Pollard. Yeah, he, pro, Pollard, I will say probably will have to catch or will catch more passes. I would play uh, I would play Jonathan Taylor. I would take the guaranteed, you know, 20 or so opportunities uh, over over what Pollard got. What did, what did Pollard get opportunities-wise? I think it could turn into a, a, wise, Hein, I, a Heinz game. Uh, 21 opportunities for for Pollard. Yeah, I was going to say a guaranteed 20 opportunity seems like nine targets. Uh, Pollard is more guaranteed of the touches to me. Yeah, it could be it could be a lot of Heinz. I don't know. But, I, I, I mean, love both. I mean, this is not an anti JTT, you know, They both had they both had 21 last week for what it's worth. Yeah. So, is it, will I, he I lean will Pollard. he get nine targets again? I don't know. The, I don't know if he'll get The real that question again. is how how are you benching either of these guys? What, I mean, I, obviously, you're in a championship game. Your roster is good. You're stacked. Congratulations that you get to bench one of these guys. But, I don't know, maybe look at your wide receiver and your flex and say... Yeah, you need them both in the lineup. You know, maybe these guys are better. Um, If I had to pick standard league, I'd go Taylor. Otherwise, I'm going Pollard. All right, flex spot question from Chewbacca. Jason, could you give us our, your best? <laughs> Um. Oh man, it's tempting to throw that to the producers to see if they can beat it, but um, I won't. I won't Don't do that. To I won't them. do that. Yeah, they're sweating. Although, <laughs> TD Tanyan over there, maybe I don't know. For a flex spot, would you go Chris Godwin or David Johnson? Oh my! I I, oh, I feel my. like it's got to be David Johnson. Well, uh, I, it's tough. Detroit is um the third best matchup for opposing fantasy wide receivers. Yeah, and Cincinnati, it's. I know that we look at them as a bad team, and you just say, "Oh, they're they're bad against everything." But they they haven't been bad against the run at all this year. So it's not a smash matchup for David Johnson. But I just feel like I'm David, gonna I, David Johnson doesn't run the ball anymore. Right? I'm, no, I'm going David Johnson, and I'm going to bring something else up. Let's hear it. Well, you guys, we talked about Michael Thomas in the the bus situation, and do we not lay anything at the feet of Chris Godwin here? Is yeah, this is this not his fault? I mean, he's played the majority of the year. He's had one top twelve finish. 
the whole year. He was not drafted that far behind Michael Thomas. Chris Godwin has to be one of the biggest busts in fantasy football. Yeah, Agreed. and and you know, I I think I alluded to this. Uh, I don't remember when, but David Johnson has been shockingly consistent. He only has three games on the season where he's not a top twenty-four running back. He's not been a top ten guy, and he giving you these monster performances. So he just quietly does his job in your RB two spot, giving you a solid production and nothing glorious. But that's a great piece for a fantasy football roster. Chris Godwin was better when he wore number twelve. Oh, for sure. Number fourteen, mm. Chris Godwin. He doesn't mm. even look the same. Well, they, yeah, different You're number. Onto something. Different, different number. number. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go with this Instagram question. Someone facing a decision at quarterback: Matt Ryan or Tua? So mm. Rulio well, eleven. Gets the, Tua gets the Raiders. Yeah, man. I can't imagine myself st starting Tua over Matt Ryan. Just Matt Ryan's playing the Chiefs. Almost out of principle. I mean, I totally understand Tua could have the better game, but I believe Matt Ryan is a good quarterback. I don't believe Tua is a great quarterback. So it's hard for me to say I'm going to play the worst quarterback out of two quarterbacks. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's how I view it. You're, now, let me just try to break that down, distill it a little bit. Yeah. I know you're listening. You're saying you'd rather play the better quarterback. That's the Is heart. That the of essence the, of that's what the you're heart saying? of the message. Yes. <laughs> okay. I I mean I I can't argue with it. I'd rather play I mean, the better quarterback. So Tua had two uh, rushing touchdowns last week, and he still didn't finish as a top twelve quarterback. He, he had 145 was, passing yards, no passing touchdowns. He plays Las Vegas this week. Yeah, I mean, the but, matchup but is I, better. But I'll play Matt Ryan yeah. for, for what it's worth. Yeah, I'll, I'll play Matt Ryan. All right, yeah. final big-time question breakdown, Mike. You weren't on the show yesterday, and Jalen Hurts came up mm -hmm. a lot, and this is the number one question we've been getting is basically listing the quarterbacks you'd play ahead of Hurts. The number one question we've gotten overall is, uh, do you go with Justin Herbert or Jalen Hurts this week? Where do you draw that line? Man. It's so a rookie I'm off. Uh, I'm looking at my rankings. I will play Patrick Mahomes over him for sure. I think. Man. I got to put Rodgers there. Aaron Rodgers against I Tennessee seems like a guarantee above Jalen Hurts. Does it? Yes, yeah. absolutely. It does T to Tennessee me. is a a place to find points. Uh, There's no way I'm I'm playing Hurts over Rodgers. Yeah. The variability, well, the the risk that exists of having a bad game. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. Kyler Murray's had collapse games in his rookie season despite having the legs and the opportunity. There's too yeah, much risk. Certainly, yeah, certainly Kyler Murray has had uh, bad games against tougher opponents, and Jalen Hurts is playing the Dallas Cowboys. Uh the it just it, it it's like it's it Jalen Hurts to me feels like Josh Allen where you if there is a touchdown scored Josh Allen is involved if there is a touchdown scored by the Philadelphia Eagles it feels like Jalen Hurts is going to be involved where that that's not the case for Aaron Rodgers it could it, it happened all last year where Aaron Rodgers would be fine but then all the touchdowns would just go to the running backs. I, so I'm, I'm saying that my definitive line is Patrick Mahomes. I lean playing Rodgers and Kyler over Jalen Hurts. but So with Herbert, uh, I, with Justin Herbert. Oh, Herbert, Herbert, I will play Jalen Hurts. That one's easy for me. Jalen you, you know Hurts. <laughs> no, yeah, nice cheat code. <laughs> do you know the number one defense last week? In what regard? Like fantasy. fantasy number scoring? one fantasy defense? I do not. It was the Dallas Cowboys. You know who the number four fantasy defense was two weeks ago? It's the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. Yeah. Who'd they play two weeks ago? I don't want to talk about who they played. <laughs> oh, okay. It was Cincinnati and San Francisco. Yeah, all right. <laughs> but we we know based on the Steelers going the opposite direction and based on, you know, uh, the research, you know, teams play better over the over the course of the year. Divi Certainly. And it's a divisional game. So I don't, generally these don't, 
play out exactly the way that the opposing Kyler's in a divisional game. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think it's a slam dunk that Kyler has a great game against San Francisco at all. Sure. But over, I'm going to go with the more consistent, proven option in my championship game. Over the last five weeks, because you, you know, you're bringing up who the opponent is, and that matters, um, but taking the opponent into the equation here and looking at the fantasy points given up uh, above opponent's average, over the last five weeks, the Dallas Cowboys is a negative matchup for quarterback, giving up almost one fewer point than their average Interesting. Um, so I, it, it's not a. I mean, it's 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 less than a fantasy point. So they're basically an average matchup. Not a. Uh, it's it's misleading to say they're a negative matchup, but um, yeah, they're they're not what they were. You know, at the beginning of the year, I would play. I would play Lamar Jackson ahead of Jalen Hurts. I would play Deshaun Watson ahead of Jalen Hurts. So I am less bullish about the guaranteed production than you guys are. Or not you guys, but I think than Mike is. Mike, if you had Jalen Hurts on your team right now, I know you're playing Lamar Jackson against the Giants. Oh, I don't even – I'm very happy I don't have to think about that. I would play Tom Brady ahead of Jalen Hurts. I would play Jalen Hurts over Tom Brady. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah, I've, I've got Jalen Hurts right now at, at five, so there's very few people I'm, I'm – Yeah, I have him at eight. Yeah, so, so there's the difference. So I guess I'm the only one that would play Herbert over Hurts. You are. Correct. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch. It's going to be fun to watch. Uh, if you picked up Jalen Hurts late, you are feeling really nice. And I, I agree with the Josh Allen comp where you're going to have a baseline with Hurts. I don't think Hurts is going to collapse against Dallas. I don't think that can happen. So, All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Like I said, we got the humongous episode tomorrow, Christmas Eve. Mm, actually Christmas actual Eve. Actual Christmas Eve. Uh, an extravaganza of sorts tomorrow. So make sure, make sure you tune in. I don't know if Mike will be back in the studio or not. We'll have to see. We'll have to fix his microphone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.